you might remember that on the first day I said that the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola are divided into four weeks and the third week is titled the passion and death of Jesus. We enter today that third week and because all over the world the church celebrates Monday Thursday I would like our entry into the third week to be with this event celebrated all over the world. The English word Monday comes from the Latin mandatum which means a command. What is this command and who gives this command and to whom? The command is the command to love. The command is given by the Lord Jesus and the command is given to his disciples and through his disciples to the whole world. Throughout his life, Jesus has lived a selfless life. Throughout his life, he has lived a life of giving, of reaching out, of encouraging, of boosting up. Throughout his life, he has led a life of unconditional love which requires nothing in return. He has lived a life of love which only wants to give. And now on this Monday Thursday, he brings together his entire life through two symbols. I direct you to the first of those symbols found in Mark chapter 14 verses 22 to 26. It is the scene of the Last Supper. And Jesus knows that the time has come for him to depart from this world and to go to the Father. So what does Jesus do in symbolic form? In symbolic form, he brings together his life through two symbols of bread and of wine, through the symbol of the Eucharist. The English word Eucharist comes from the Greek Eucharistein, which means to thank. So at the Last Supper, in this Eucharist, which he celebrates with his disciples, Jesus gives thanks to the Father. Thanksgiving even though he knows that he is going to die. Thanksgiving even though he knows that his body is going to be broken on the cross and his blood shed. Thanksgiving because he knows that the Father always does what is best for him and for the world. And while they were eating, Jesus breaks this bread and identifies the broken bread with his body. He shares the cup of wine and identifies the wine with his blood. And the command here is to do this breaking and shedding of body and blood in remembrance of the Lord. The symbol will remain at the level of symbol unless it is transformed into reality. In the case of Jesus, 
the reality of his life was brought together in these symbols and from the symbol taken to the cross. Is the Eucharist the center of my life? When I use the term Eucharist or Mass, what do I mean? Do I refer to the ritual that is celebrated in the church? Am I one of those who hears Mass and forgets about it later? Am I one of those who goes to the sacrament of the Eucharist only to fulfill an obligation or because I am scared of punishment by God? Does my Eucharist end in the church or is my life a Eucharistic life? If I have to be a true disciple of Jesus, I cannot let the ritual end in the church. The ritual has to be transformed into reality. Like in the case of Jesus, the symbols of bread and wine became in reality his body and blood. So in my case, whenever I participate in the Eucharist, I need to be transformed. I need to become a better person. I need to give and to reach out and to love. If not, then I need to ask myself whether I'm really participating in the Eucharist. In the Eucharist as we celebrate it today, every single sacrament is contained. In the Eucharist as we celebrate it today, every single sacrament is brought forth the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of community, the sacrament of baptism, the sacrament of giving and of giving till it hurts. And so my plea to you would be that as we celebrate the Eucharist this Monday Thursday, that you ask God to keep your mind open to the grace that he wants to pour therein. That your mass that your Eucharist will be celebrated on the altar of the world and that the bread that is broken and the wine that is shared will be your own giving of yourself. A giving till it hurts. A giving even when there is nothing to give. A giving which will go beyond anything that you have ever done before. A second symbol which is used by Jesus in the Gospel of John chapter 13 verses 1 to 12 is a symbol of the washing of the feet. And even though washing of the feet may be interpreted as the sign of humble service, as the sign of doing humble labour, as a sign of choosing the lesser place, it goes beyond. Because it is not merely humble service or choosing the menial job, it is a prophetic gesture. Jesus does not wash the feet of his disciples before the meal like may have been usually done. But Jesus begins to wash the feet of his disciples when they are in the midst of the meal in order to open their eyes. So already when he got up from the meal they would have been confused. They would have been wondering what he was doing. If he had washed their feet before they began the meal we could have interpreted it merely as humble service. However, because it is in the midst of the meal that Jesus gets up from table, he wants us to give a completely different interpretation to this prophetic gesture. Later on he explains what he means when he asks his disciples to do what he has done. If I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, you also must do likewise, which does not mean merely physically washing the feet, but which means 
living the life of Jesus. And that's why when Peter refuses the washing, Jesus says, unless you let me wash your feet, you'll have no meros. Meros is heritage. Meros is something which you leave behind. Meros is legacy. Meros is translated as a part. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus if he doesn't serve you and you do not accept his command to love and to serve forever. And so, as we enter into Monday Thursday, as we listen to the mandatum, to the command of the Lord inviting us to a fuller life, let us realize that it is in giving that we receive. It is in reaching out that we are reached out to. It is in dying to our ego and ourselves that we will have life eternal.